Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we used the Locktronics board from Matrix TSL in order to carry out some circuit analysis on a parallel circuit. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a similar thing, but we're just going to do it in theory. Now, this is a really important thing to be able to do because it's the kind of question that you might get asked to carry out as part of your exams and assessments. So what we've got on the board, as you can see here, is we've got three resistors that are connected in parallel with each other. So that means that when we connect a supply up down here, the current can flow to each of these resistors and each resistor doesn't affect the current flowing to the others. So in other words, the current doesn't have to flow through this resistor in order to get to this one or this one. Therefore, they are connected in parallel. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to calculate how much current is flowing to each resistor. I'm then going to show you how to calculate the total current flowing into the circuit. And then I'm also going to show you another method of doing that where we calculate the total resistance of the circuit first and then use that to find the total current. So just follow me through these easy step-by-step -step stages. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to start throwing some values onto the circuit here. So the first thing that we're gonna be interested in is the voltage that we're applying to the circuit. Now, because this is a parallel circuit and we're considering it to be a perfect parallel circuit where these connecting wires effectively have zero resistance, meaning that we're not gonna have any issues with volt drop in this circuit, more on that in a future video. So what we're gonna say is that the supply voltage, so we're gonna call that V with a little S down there in the subscript, is going to be equal to 240 volts. Now, you may look at that and think, why not use 230 volts, which is obviously the nominal single phase voltage in the UK. And the reason for that, there's two reasons really. 240 volts is actually a much more realistic value of what you might get here in the UK if you were to measure the voltage at an incoming supply. Uh, and also it's much more divisible, which is gonna help us out with our calculations here. So I'm actually being kind to you by using a nice divisible number there. You'll see why that's important in a moment. Now what we need to do is start adding some resistor values on. So we're going to call these resistor 1, resistor 2 and resistor 3. And remember these resistors, we're just using them to represent loads that might be found in an electrical circuit. So in other words, these could represent maybe uh, lighting points or socket outlets or uh, different elements of an industrial machine or something like that. So they're just representing a load in each part of the circuit. So let's assign some values to these resistors. So we're gonna say that this one, which we're gonna call R1, so there's a capital R with a little one in the subscript, we're gonna say that that is equal to 20 ohms. So that one has a value of 20 ohms. And then we're gonna say that this one, which we'll call R2, that one has a value of 80 ohms, we're gonna go for, so that's 80 ohms there. And then finally, this one at the top, which we're gonna label R3, we're going to give that one a value of 60 ohms. So there we go. So we've got our values there, 20 ohms, 80 ohms, and 60 ohms. So step one in this process is to calculate what the individual currents flowing into each resistor will be. So because this is a parallel circuit, we know that the voltage applied down here will be the same as the voltage across that resistor, the voltage across that resistor, and the voltage across that resistor. So each of these resistors, each one of these loads, has got a voltage of 240 volts applied across it. And that's because it's a parallel circuit. So that means that the voltage is effectively uh, constant throughout the circuit. It's the same uh, across each of these resistors. So we want to know now, what is the current flowing into this branch of the circuit into that resistor. So what is what we'll call I1 going to be? We also want to know what I2 is going to be. So that's the current flowing into that resistor. And we also want to know what I3 is going to be. So we don't know what that is yet. And that's the current flowing into that resistor. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna carry out step one of this process. So we'll actually call this step one. And step one is we're going to calculate the individual currents flowing into each resistor. Now this is really easy. If you've seen any of my previous videos on Ohm's law, then you might be able to guess what we're about to do. We're gonna use Ohm's law. Now again, you'll see this kind of being explained in lots of different ways, but the best way of remembering it is like that. I equals V over R. Now the reason that's important is that this actually explains pretty much what we do in the real world. We have a resistance or a load, we apply a voltage to it, and that results in a current flowing into that circuit. So I equals V over R. This is kind of a real world application of Ohm's law. 
So then all we've got to do is just stick our numbers in. So our voltage is 240 volts that we're applying to each of these resistors. So just to make this a little bit clearer, actually, let me uh, just label this up a little bit more accurately. So what we're going to say is that I1, the current flowing here is I1, that's what we're trying to find initially, which is the voltage uh, divided by R1. So that's R1 there. And this will actually be, in this case, Vs, the supply voltage. So just to make that a little bit clearer, the supply voltage is the same as the voltage over that resistor. And we're trying to find current number one, which is flowing into this part of the circuit, by taking the supply voltage and dividing it by resistor number one. So we put the numbers in. So we've got 240, that's 240 volts divided by 20 ohms. So 240 divided by 20, is going to give us, don't really need to put this one into a calculator, is going to give us 12 amps. So down here, we have got 12 amps flowing into this circuit. So 12 amps is flowing into that resistor, is drawing 12 amps from the supply. Now, hopefully you can see pretty clearly what the next stage of this is going to be. All we've got to do now is we calculate these remaining currents. So we're gonna figure out what I2 is. So I2 will be, Again, the supply voltage, because it's the same voltage throughout the whole circuit, divided by, in this case, it's going to be R2, because we're interested in current number two, which is defined by resistor number two, or load number two. So again, we put the numbers in, 240 divided by 80. So 240 divided by 80, that's going to give us three amps. So we now know that flowing into this part of the circuit, we have got three amperes. Happy days. And now we need to figure out what I3 is going to be, or in other words, the current flowing into resistor number three. Now, you may notice as I'm going through this, what I'm doing is I'm writing out the formula every single time. And this is one of those interesting things where my learners always used to say to me, how do you remember all these formulas, all these electrical formulas? And the honest answer is, is that I just have written them down so many times that they just kind of have become kind of part of my brain really uh, all my neurons and synapses they've just they've been through this so many times it's just got them locked in there but the way that that works and the way that I always encourage my learners to do and what I'll encourage you to do as well is whenever you do any kind of electrical calculation for your science and principles write down the formula put the numbers in and then find your answer and do that every single time it does get a bit tiresome sometimes you kind of find yourself you feel like you're just repeating yourself over and over again but it is a really good way of just getting that stuff locked in. You know, if I ever gave out a worksheet with, you know, seven or eight questions on there, and I'd say to them, every time, formula, numbers, answer, as I went around the room, it'd always be, you know, there'd be learners who said, well, I've, I've put the formula at the top of the sheet, so it's there. Yeah, I know it's there, but if you write it down for every question, I know by the time you've left here, you've written that formula down seven or eight times, and therefore it's going to be pretty firmly embedded in your brain, in theory. So looking at this one now, we've got current number three is equal to the supply voltage, which is also the voltage across that resistor, divided by resistor number three, because we're interested in the current flowing through that resistor now. So we've got uh, the supply voltage, which is 240 volts again, that hasn't changed, divided by 60 ohms. So 240 divided by 60 is going to give us four amps flowing through there. So now we know that flowing through this part of the circuit, we have got four amperes. So that's step one. Now, uh, step two in this process is we're going to try and figure out what the total uh, current flowing into the circuit is. Uh, but it's interesting to note that we're, we're going to go through that process, but then I'll show you something that you can kind of use to your advantage in certain ways in figuring out what the current is at any point in the circuit, uh, not just the total current. But at this moment in time, what we're really interested in now is how much current is there flowing into this part of the circuit here. So how much current is there flowing from the supply into the circuit up to that branch there? Well, let's figure that out. So step two is to very simply figure out what the total current flowing into the circuit is. So this is step two. And to do that, it couldn't be easier. All we've got to do is say, right, I want to find out the total current. So we'll call that IT for the total current is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And actually, if we had even more resistors piled on the top here, we'd be able to just keep adding those on the end as well. So uh, just put the numbers in. So I1 was 12 amps. We calculated that. So we've got 12 
plus I2, which was 3 amps, the current flowing into resistor number 2. And then we've got I number 3, which is 4 amps, which is the current flowing into the top resistor. So 12 plus 3 plus 4, and 12 plus 3 plus 4 gives us a value of 19 amperes. So now we know that flowing into this circuit is a current of 19 amperes. So we can say that IT is equal to 19 amperes amps like that. So there we go, step two complete, we've found the total current for the circuit. Okay, and now what we can do is start to think about some of the other currents in the circuit. So we know how much is flowing into each individual resistor, we know how much current is flowing into the circuit as a whole, but what we can also do is figure out how much current there is flowing through here, because this is very simply going to be the current drawn by this resistor added to the current drawn by this resistor. And that makes sense because once the total current gets to this point, 12 amps of it splits off and goes that way, which means that there must be a certain amount left going this way, and that certain amount is 3 amps plus 4 amps. So we know that the current flowing through that part of the circuit is going to be 7 amperes, which again makes sense because you could do 19 minus 12 gives you 7, or you can do 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So it all makes nice logical sense at this stage. So having analysed all of those currents inside that circuit, what we're going to do is leave that here for this video, because in the next video we're going to look at the next logical step at this, which is kind of an alternative way of figuring out what the total current is for the circuit without having to find the individual currents. But we'll look at that in the next video. So if you've got any thoughts or questions on anything that we've discussed in this video, then please leave those in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.